never came back. That's for WrestleMania season. So these are very concerning numbers. But on a totally different note, also concerning, is how coronavirus has affected wrestlers and promoters around the country. And we are very happy today to be joined by Michael Lombardi, president of Northeast Wrestling, one of the biggest independent promotions in this country. Michael, what's going on? How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah. So you have run some spectacularly large shows and you had a very big one coming up. Matt Hardy was going to be on the show. Darby Allen was going to be on the show. Sammy Guevara was going to be on the show. Canceled. And at this point, I presume, we have no idea when the next show is going to be. Yeah, we had a big event scheduled, WrestleFest uh, 24, supposed to be March 27th. We had Matt Hardy, who was going to be his uh, return to the ring. We had it set before the different things that he was doing on uh you know on dynamite so that was going to be pretty cool we had sammy Guevara against darby allen plus our um, northeast wrestling champions ring of honors dan moff and a whole host of others we had you know a great advance for the show but obviously we have to reschedule it and all our upcoming events are re being rescheduled all the venues that uh, we even already have contracts with or that we were going to contract with for the summer, we do a lot of events at Six Flags um, Amusement Parks. Last year, Six Flags in uh, New Jersey, we had over 4,000 people. We had, uh, you know, John Moxley, you know, and, you know, going down, the, going down the list and a lot of minor league baseball stadiums. And even if we have some contracts, people are looking into changing the dates. They can get out of contracts because venues aren't sure when they're going to be able to you know, reopen, you know, all the amusement parks, they're closed. I talked to someone at Six Flags, New Jersey today, and with what's going on, they cannot even have their crews go into the park to do normal maintenance and cleanup. So if they're allowed, you know, in mid-May, it's going to take everyone at least 30 days to even be ready to get up and running, even to put parks, stadiums, et cetera, in, you know, in, in a condition where you could even open. So everything's going to be, you know, everything's way pushed back and it's having a big impact on, you know, us financially, along with, you know, of course, everyone in the country and all of the wrestlers that we use that, you know, aren't currently under contract with, you know, with any companies. So have you got another job? I mean, are you at two jobs right now or was this your main source of income or how is this affecting you personally? This is a this is a full time job running this uh, company we run. 40 to 50 events a year from smaller monthly events and you know, our regular venues to give younger guys the rep and the, the work and help them moving along with the huge shows that we do. I do have um, another source of employment that I'm um, teleworking from home. Uh, I actually work for the federal government. I'm in a uh, procurement or a, a buying office. You know, so, you know, pretty high up there. So, I'm, you know, just like everyone else, I, I was in a position I'm trying to buy, uh, you know, some of the offices and employees here, the N95 masks and disposable gloves and, uh, you know, uh, sanitizing agents for, you know, for workers and stuff. So, I'm here trying to research, find this, cut deals with vendors and trying to purchase these things. And it's the same thing that hospitals and everyone else is trying to buy. So, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty difficult. So I guess the we can go back to the beginning. We could talk more about this here in a while, but you've been doing this for a long time. And was it 1996? When did you start promoting? Well, I actually started in the, in the uh, you know, wrestling business. I, I went to some independent shows in the early 90s. Uh, I had some friends that worked for Dennis Corluzzo and Larry Sharp, Clementine, New Jersey, went to some of those matches and kind of got acclimated in the wrestling business a little bit. Then out of college, I had a friend that was a program director for a local radio station. They were looking for some programming on uh, the, the news talk radio. They had sports, etc. cetera. And you know, I was into wrestling and had some connections and asked if I wanted to do a, a wrestling talk radio show. I did that for a little bit. And then from there, uh, you know, I had some high school asked if I could help you know, put on a wrestling show as a fundraiser. You know, they had an austerity budget. They lost all the funding for their sports extracurricular activities. 
and that was my, you know, first uh, foray into, uh, you know, to wrestling, you know, and promoting shows. But before that, I, I did do uh, a lot of autograph sessions at, you know, local malls and, and different places. So I did that with, with wrestlers. But the first event we did was actually December 9th, uh, 1995. 95. So this year would be our 25th year. So the obvious question here, uh, 1995, I mean, running shows, running indie shows in 1995 as compared to running indie shows in 2020, I mean, everything has changed. I mean, what can you, what can you tell us about memories of doing it early on and challenges and, and things that have changed in 2020 for the better and maybe even for the worse? It was very difficult to run shows back in 1995 when I started. Now, it's uh, it's what the business has turned into, right or wrong. Someone could come into a little bit of money. Their grandmother could pass away. They get a little money now. They go on Twitter or Facebook or some other social media, and they contact some wrestlers. They try to run a wrestling show. They find out how to rent a ring. Right now, anybody could attempt to promote professional wrestling. You know, most people are not successful. It's not something that anyone can do. Uh, you have to have an understanding of the wrestling business and you have to have business acumen. Uh, you know, I have a you know business degree and I, I put a lot of time, you know, in the business and many different areas, uh, you know, along with promoting. Uh, so now just about anybody can attempt to do it and they think they can do it. Back then, a little more of a closed shop, even though it was 1995, only 25 years ago, you try to run a show in an area, uh, you know, it was a, a little more, uh, a little more old school. Someone might be wanting to knock on your door saying, Hey, I run shows in this area. You shouldn't be running. And back then it was a big thing. If I had Bam Bam Bigelow's number, sure was. Just say I, I booked Bam Bam Bigelow, you know, on some shows, there could be a promoter in Pennsylvania that says, Hey, can you give me Bam Bam Bigelow's phone number? I would like to book him. And I would say, man, do you have Jim Neidhart's number? I'll, you know, I'll give you Bam Bam's number. You hit me up with Jim Neidhart. You put me over so I could book him on a show. Now, anybody can hit up somebody's Facebook or, you know, or they send them a Twitter message, et cetera, on how to book somebody. So back then, it was still pretty much a closed shop. There was, you know, there was no internet, social media, or the, in, the internet was in infancy. There was no social media, so it was very difficult to, you know, book the guys. And to promote shows, back then, you could put an ad or two in the newspaper. You can put some posters up around town. We ran a lot of big shows, and, you know, we're blessed. We had big crowds, you know, even back then. You could say, uh, Bam Bam Bigelow against King Kong Bundy, and then you throw in, you know, whoever else you would have, Sid or whomever else on the show, maybe some ECW guys and, you know, we try to use some of the better workers and good indie guys back in the day, like Rector's Use, et cetera. And you'll sell 1,500, 1,800 tickets to a high school gym if you put in the work, the footwork, and you knew what you were doing. Where today, I can do a $100,000 house, Mid-Hudson Civic Center in Poughkeepsie, had John Moxley against uh, a Pentagon Junior, or I had Ray Phoenix against... Um, Kenny Omega, I did not buy one newspaper ad. I did not buy one commercial on Raw. We didn't post up any posters or flyers to go around town. You just, just by social media, getting the word out, if you're, you know, if with our company, strong social media present, you know, use big names, and you have a great reputation, you can sell out straight on social media, do a $100,000 house. Okay, I got I gotta ask this you question to do then. Footwork. I have to ask this question then. So in the 90s, Yes, we did the same thing. They they would print up 500 posters. We had a poster everywhere in the city. Everybody hated doing it, but the posters actually helped. Like if you poster versus non-poster would make a huge difference in how many people showed up for your show. Then there was a period in like I'd say the mid to mid 2000s or whatever where people tried to go all on social media and they didn't do any of the postering or anything like that. And there was a period where that did not work. Like, you could do all the social media stuff that you wanted, but you still had to poster. You still had to get the ad out via traditional means. And now, as you're noting, it can, you can all do it on social media. When did that transition take place? When did you find that, finally, 
I can only use social media and not have to buy an ad on Raw, not have to post her to the town. Probably in the last year or two. And a lot of it depends on <clears throat> excuse me, the talent that is on the show. Because there, and not every market is the same. I have some markets where you still have to do a little radio. And I have some markets where, for whatever reason, newspaper works. Or if you run a couple of cable ads on Raw or Dynamite, etc. And then there's others where you don't have to do any. I think where there's a larger concentration of quote unquote, like smart fans, maybe that follow social media. And if you have someone like John Moxley, Kenny Omega, uh, you know, Darby Allen, Sammy, that, that type of talent, you can get away without it. If you wanted to use more of a WWE based talent on the show, you may have to go to some of the more traditional, uh, ways of promoting to draw. Hey, Michael, how do you determine with those? Sense? With the name talent, how do you determine which piece of talent from TV is going to give you the best return on, you know, an investment? I imagine right now Matt Hardy's fee is probably a little higher than it would be. Um, it, it all depends. Uh, you know, right now there, there has been a change. You can use former WWE names on a show and they will not draw. Like we had a show in, uh, in January, Waterbury, Connecticut. We had a 900-seat venue. We sold it out very quickly. We had to move to a 2,000-seat venue. The talent that we had on that show. Now, we had Bob Backlund because he lives 10 minutes from the place. He signed autographs, you know, before the show. Did a little something. Other than that, we had the, gr the Gorillas of Destiny on the show. We had Marty Skrull, uh, Vinny Marseglia from Ring of Honor. They worked each other. We had Darby Allen, Dan Moff, and... We did like a traditional our, our rumble, but between Darby Allen, who was our champ at the time, you had the Gorillas of Destiny and Marty Skrull, we didn't have to do any local advertising. We just go for the hot names, and you know, in in our area, you know, we have a, a really good uh, we have a really good reputation. <clears throat> Excuse me, we're known for first time ever matches. Right now, on our YouTube page, uh, YouTube dot com. Uh, forward slash Northeast Wrestling, which we're trying to push right now when this is dead time. We're uploading a lot of older matches just to keep our name out there and to give content for people to watch. We have on there Adam Cole against Cody Rhodes. Uh, once, you know, Adam Cole was able to work before he went to NXT outside of Ring of Honor, the only time they ever wrestled each other. We had Jeff Hardy, who just posted up there against Jushin Liger. Matt Hardy against Matt Taven. You know, whether it's uh, Pentagon Jr. against John Moxley or Phoenix against um, Kenny Omega. The first two Hardys against Young Buck matches ever, 2014, we promoted those matches. So we've been, uh, you know, Kurt Angle, Cody Rhodes, you name it. We've been, we've been lucky to be able to uh, book and promote these types of matches. And uh, it's... Uh, Kind of just keeps flowing from there. All right, we'll stand by. We're going to head to a break here in just a moment. And when we come back, we'll get all the information out here about everything that you've been talking about here. Northeast Wrestling, youtube.com slash Northeast Wrestling. All sorts of matches up there. We'll talk about it more after the break. Stick around. Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Jim Valley joining us here today. Michael Lombardi, Northeast Wrestling, joining us. Got a lot of stuff to get out there about the promotion, including the YouTube channel. YouTube.com forward slash Northeast Wrestling. And anything else you want to get out there, Michael, the floor is yours. All right. You can check out matches and uh, segments and superstars on the Northeast Wrestling Channel, the High Spots Wrestling Network. We're on the Northeast Wrestling Network at uh, northeastwrestling.pivotchair.com. Matches uh, people in their formative years, uh, everybody from Flip Gordon, Matt Taven, to superstars like Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Daniel Bryan, Samoa Joe, Cody, Kurt Angle, Hardys, Rey Mysterio, you name it. Right now, northeastwrestling.com, we have the 50% off sale on all DVDs. You know, going back 20 years that you can pick up, people are home, give you something to watch. 
Uh, our Twitter is NEW Wrestling One, Instagram, uh, Northeast Wrestling. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for doing the show here today. Check it out, everybody. All sorts of great stuff. Matches like Jeff Hardy, Jushin Liger, Cody Rhodes, Adam Cole, Dominic Dijakovic, Keith Lee, Matt Riddle, Brad Halser. There's so much more up there. Check out the page, youtube.com slash. 